15 Surprising Artifacts Found in the Titanic Wreckage When the RMS Titanic first set sail in 1912, it was believed to be, unsinkable. The ship's maiden voyage, a cross-Atlantic journey from England to America, appealed to the public not just because of the ship's impressive size but also because of its extravagance. Approximately 882 feet long and 92 feet wide, the Titanic weighed more than 52,000 tons when fully laden. Obviously, this left plenty of room for amenities. The ship's first-class section boasted veranda cafes, a gym, a swimming pool, and luxurious Turkish baths. By all appearances, the Titanic was a dream come true. But the dream soon turned into a nightmare. Just four days after the ship had departed, it famously hit an iceberg and sank. On April 10, 1912, the RMS Titanic departed from Southampton, England on its historic voyage to New York City. But disaster struck four days later when the massive ship crashed into an iceberg. In less than three hours after the collision, the Titanic sank into the North Atlantic Ocean. Well boys, you've done your duty and done it well. I ask no more of you, Captain Edward Smith allegedly told his crew shortly before the ship went down. I release you. You know the rule of the sea. It's every man for himself now, and God bless you. The Titanic was equipped to carry 64 lifeboats but was only outfitted with 20, four of which were collapsibles. So the effort to evacuate became another disaster. It took about an hour before the first lifeboat was released into the sea. And most of the lifeboats weren't even filled to capacity. The Titanic sent out multiple distress signals. While some vessels responded, most were too far away. And so the closest one, the RMS Carpathia, at 58 miles away, began heading toward the doomed ship. It took two hours and 40 minutes after the iceberg collision for the entire Titanic to sink. The RMS Carpathia did not arrive until about an hour later. Fortunately, its crew was able to pull survivors onto their ship. Of the estimated 2,224 passengers and crew aboard the Titanic, roughly 1,500 died. About 700 people, mostly women and children, survived the tragedy. The survivors finally reached New York on April 18th. From pieces of the destroyed ship to items recovered from the wreckage, these 15 artifacts from the Titanic reveal the true scope of the tragedy. A rare paper artifact from the Titanic, this document belonged to a German immigrant and stated a declaration of intention of U.S. citizenship. Paper or textile items that were recovered survived because they were inside suitcases, said Alexandra Klingelhofer, vice president of collections for Premier Exhibitions Inc. The tanned leather of the suitcases tended to protect them. A pair of gloves that survived the wreckage A battered pair of white cotton gloves were one of the artifacts found in the Titanic wreckage, and they have since been dubbed some of the rarest Titanic artifacts ever recovered, according to USA Today. The gloves have been put on display in various Titanic exhibitions since they were found, but in 2016, they were returned to a conservation facility for permanent retirement. The violin played as the ship sank while an old violin being found among the wreckage of the Titanic isn't necessarily shocking, its backstory is. According to CNN, the decaying violin was the very one that bandleader Wallace Hartley used to play, nearer, my god, to thee, as the ship sank. It sold for $1.7 million during a UK auction in 2013. And for more on things of the past that we've lost, here are 45 historical sites that no longer exist. A love letter written by Richard Geddes, a steward aboard the Titanic, to his wife. The letter was written on original Titanic stationery that was provided on the ship and still has its original White Star Line envelope. On April 10, 1912, Geddes wrote to his wife to describe a near collision with the SS City of New York. Onlookers saw the incident as a bad omen for the Titanic. The bell rung to warn of the iceberg The bell from the crow's nests of the Titanic was recovered in the 1985 expedition and is currently a collection piece on display at the Titanic Museum in Massachusetts. It's the same bell that was rung three times by lookout Frederick Fleet in an attempt to warn the ship that an iceberg was ahead. A menu of the ship's last meal A menu of the last meal served on the Titanic to first-class passengers was auctioned off in 2012, selling for $83,000, according to the BBC. The meal was served the same day the ship crashed into the glacier, and it featured several courses including, eggs argentoy, consomme fermier, and chicken a la Maryland.
Sheet music played by ill-fated musicians despite being submerged in the ocean for 73 years, divers recovered a piece of sheet music for the song, Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey, from the 1910 Broadway production of Madame Sherry. It was played by the doomed musicians on the sinking ship, according to the Dothan Eagle. Since being discovered, the artifact has been on display at several Titanic exhibits, most recently in Atlanta, Georgia. A pocket watch stuck at the time the ship sank the pocket watch of one of the ship's victims was another artifact found in the Titanic wreckage. As reported by the Telegraph, the rusty watch was owned by passenger John Chapman, who was traveling with his wife, Lizzie. What makes this so unique is the fact that it's literally frozen in time. The watch is stuck at 1.45 a.m., which is around the time the ship became submerged underwater. A fur coat worn by a stewardess who survived the shipwreck A floor-length beaver fur coat found in the Titanic wreckage was worn by first-class stewardess Mabel Bennett, who, according to the Telegraph, was given the coat to wear after she was found waiting for a lifeboat clad in only a nightgown. As one of the only fully intact pieces of clothing to survive the shipwreck, it sold at auction for around $165,000 in 2017. Bennett, who was 33 when the ship sank, survived that night. She later died at 96 in 1974, making her the longest living female member of the Titanic crew. A bronze cherub from the Grand Staircase's upper landing One bronze cherub statue, a decoration from the upper landing of the Titanic's Grand Staircase, was also recovered in 1985. However, the statue is missing its left foot, likely due to the fact that it was ripped from its post as the ship sank. Keys used to access lifeboat lanterns These keys recovered from the wreckage aren't just any old keys. They were used by crewman Samuel Hemming during the sinking of the ship to unlock a door, behind which a stock of lifeboat lanterns were waiting. The keys themselves played a part in the story as they were actually used in those last desperate hours, Aldridge told the Irish Times. This is because Mr. Hemming received a personal order from Captain Edward J. Smith as the ship was sinking and it became apparent all was lost to ensure all of the lifeboats were provided with lamps. And a bracelet engraved with the name of a third-class passenger out of the wreckage of the Titanic also came a woman's 15-carat rose gold and silver bracelet with the name Amy encrusted in diamonds. In her 1998 book Titanic, Women and Children First, Judith Geller, former director of merchandising for the Titanic exhibition, suggests that it might have belonged to Amy Stanley, a third-class passenger and one of the only Amys on board. And a bracelet engraved with the name of a third-class passenger out of the wreckage of the Titanic also came a woman's 15-carat rose gold and silver bracelet with the name Amy encrusted in diamonds. In her 1998 book Titanic, Women and Children First, Judith Geller, former director of merchandising for the Titanic exhibition, suggests that it might have belonged to Amy Stanley, a third-class passenger and one of the only Amys on board. Perfume bottles that were meant for a new life in America When German-born chemist Adolf Salfeld boarded the Titanic, he did so with a satchel full of various perfume bottle samples, all of which were found in the ship's wreckage. Salfeld, a first-class passenger, had intended to open his own fragrance shop in America, a dream he sadly never realized. Whistle that belonged to 5th officer Harold Lowe, who is heralded as one of the heroes of the Titanic tragedy. Lowe not only potentially served as the literal whistleblower of the disaster, he also commanded the 14th lifeboat and rescued survivors from the icy waters. It's unclear whether Lowe blew this exact whistle that night, though its connection to one of the key figures of the tragedy is enough to make this artifact one of the most striking in the entire collection. Two parts of a destroyed clarinet recovered from the Titanic. Music was a huge part of the entertainment on board, and the Titanic's band famously played on even as the ship went down. This poorly preserved men's leather shoe only consists of the welt, top cap, and partial quarter with the insole. This titanic artifact is rarely shown due to its fragile condition. The remains of the titanic were lost to the sea for 73 years. In 1985, the wreck was uncovered by American oceanographer Robert Ballard and French scientist Jean-Louis Michel. The wreckage was located 12,500 feet underneath the ocean some 370 miles south of Newfoundland, Canada. Since 1987, a private American company called RMS Titanic, Inc. has salvaged more than 5,000 artifacts from the Titanic. These relics include everything from pieces of the hull to China. 
RMS Titanic, Inc. made seven research and recovery expeditions to recover Titanic artifacts from the underwater site between 1987 and 2004. Since these expeditions, some Titanic artifacts have fetched thousands of dollars through auctions, such as an entry ticket to the ship's lavish Turkish baths, which sold for $11,000. Although glass, metal, and ceramic items are common among the collections, paper items are far rarer. The paper or textile items that were recovered survived because they were inside suitcases. The tanned leather of the suitcases tended to protect them, said Alexandra Klingelhofer, Vice President of Collections for Premier Exhibitions Inc. Klingelhofer described the suitcases as, time capsules, that can give people a, sense of the person who owned the suitcase. It's like getting reacquainted with someone, the things that were important to them, Klingelhofer said. Other noteworthy Titanic artifacts include the kimono said to be worn by survivor Lady Duff Gordon on the night of the tragedy, sold for $75,000, and a violin owned by Wallace Hartley, the ship's bandmaster who famously played on as the ship sank, sold for $1.7 million. Many artifacts have been recovered from the wreckage but countless items from the Titanic tragedy are still sitting at the bottom of the sea, slowly deteriorating from corrosion, oceanic eddies, and undercurrents. However, the RMS Titanic, Inc.'s announcement of its plans to conduct more explorations, including the intent to retrieve the ship's iconic radio equipment, sparked a backlash. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration argued in court documents that the radio equipment may be surrounded, by the mortal remains of more than 1,500 people, and therefore should be left alone. But in May 2020, U.S. District Judge Rebecca Beach Smith ruled that RMS Titanic, Inc. has the right to retrieve the radio, citing its historic and cultural importance along with the fact that it may soon disappear. However, the U.S. government filed a legal challenge in June, claiming that this plan would violate federal law and a pact with Britain that recognizes the wreck as a memorial site. While there is an argument to be made that the deterioration of the submerged Titanic artifacts may be a good enough reason to continue retrievals from the site, some historians remain opposed to the radio rescue. No matter how the story ends, there's no denying that there is still a field full of the Titanic's untouched history under the sea. Thank you for watching.